First of all, thank you for thank you. chatting to South End Theatre scene today. Very cool. Um, it's fun to be part of the South End theatre scene. <laughs> I feel quite posh. Do you? Yes. Can you do an English accent? No. It sounds a bit like Dick Van Dyke when I do it. Do you know what? I listened to Osman's yeah, the cartoon series. Oh, yeah. From when, way back when. Jimmy and James. Did you see that Jimmy one? Jimmy and James. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was the one when you came to London. I was both voices. You were. Yeah, it was quite that weird was... to be a young kid doing the voice of a young kid that was a cartoon of you. Yeah, yeah crazy times. I, I never knew what normal was when I started, you know. Mm. I always say this, but it's true. I always thought every kid did what I did because yeah. I was with my family, you know, traveling around and doing abnormal things now that I look back. Mm. I know? always remember Prince Charles said that when he was a little boy, he used to think that every single person he ever met was so friendly because they always waved to him. Yeah. <laughs> and it must be similar. Wouldn't that be thing. nice if the whole world was like that? Yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think in God's eyes we all are princes and princesses. That's nice. I think that's the way to live your life. I like, I like the sound I of that. I think that's the way it is. So tell us a little bit about the theatre that you run. Um, well, I own this theatre. I've owned theatres for about 23 years. I've had probably three theatres. Uh, and helped run more than that. And then I sold most of them um, just before Andy passed away. Mm. And Andy Williams was my mentor and friend as a little boy. I'd be on his show and travel around the world with him and my brothers. Because and... obviously most people must have seen you when you were a little three-year-old boy. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just kind of crazy way yeah. to grow up. But then, you know, he told me about Branson. So I had sold my TV studio and I went there and bought this theater for a magician called Harry Blackstone Jr. Okay. And um, Harry got cancer, unfortunately. And so I called my brothers and I said, can you come on and help me for a few months? And open the theater and 23 years later, we're still doing shows there in that market. But Andy wanted to keep his Christmas shows going since the 60s, he'd have an Andy Williams Christmas show. Yeah. And uh, uninterrupted. And uh, he said, you know, he knew I was good at theater operations and yeah. uh, he wanted me to keep it going so I bought it like he said and uh, this show that I'm doing was a pet project of his uh, he actually did a DVD that's just for the theater right. of special performances on his show mm -hmm. and his favorite music that he would sing right and he wanted a show like that you know and so I did it for the theater I wasn't supposed to be in it and I saw I hired Charlie Green and from Britain's Got Talent and other another cast of people and uh, it just needed that connectivity. So I hosted it and did the Christmas show at night. Right. And it went so well that promoters from around the world have been asking me to bring it. And of course, this is my favorite place to perform because you guys are so nice. You let me be more than just a guy that was in that band that sang that song, yeah. you know. Well, saying that, you've kind of won our hearts over here because no, you were that, in, a, but... in a very popular program called MasterChef, oh, yeah. weren't you? Well, I've done lots of reality <laughs> TV, you have, you did so I'm not afraid of anything, but I should have been afraid of that one because it was full on hard. Was it? And it was great fun. You know, whenever you push yourself and you're with other people having the same experience, that, you know, that competitiveness, mm. you end up really bringing out either the best or the worst of yourself and you end up with friendships that last and so I've never done one of those shows that I haven't had somebody that stuck as a lifetime friend. Oh, who's your lifetime friend from well, Master Show? Loads of people really? in there, you know. I mean Sid Owen, I was in the jungle with him and then of course mm. Tommy from Cannon and Wall and and, uh, and again Alexis became a, a great friend, Alexa, and then uh, also Louise. Yeah. And then, you know who was a really odd friend, I mean, you, you, not an odd person, an odd friend that I, you'd never think okay. we would be buddies, is Oddly, the boxer. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. And we became really? really good buddies, and, uh, you know, and that's, what, that's such a bonus mm -hmm. when you go in there with the right idea. And it's not about just winning, it's about just being part of the team. Yeah, and I think that's what indeed you two are. Well, I think they all you had that say, though. I think I was lucky because I had so many disasters that actually turned out tasting amazing. Really? Because if I had to do it again, I'd probably blow yeah, it, yeah, you know. Yeah. But on the day, it was wild. But when they actually announced the winner, were you, did you feel any? Not at all. 
I was so relieved because I didn't almost feel like I belonged there because it was I never I went far past whatever I thought I would mm. and it was everything. quite emotional wasn't it yeah it I was feel. and it was emotional more so for me because first of all I was exhausted mm. and I was the only one that went from heat four directly into the semis into the finals because right. everybody else had like a month off to kind of prepare yeah and I was out of ideas and I was in there because my little girl loves cooking shows. I, she, I wanted to be her hero. Oh, bless you. And she thought I was. And so oh, that kind of touched my heart. And mm. then I kind of bawled like a baby yeah. when I talked about her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> but she's my little princess. She's she's um, such a sweet little gal. Aww. So I'd call and text her recipes. and Excellent. You know, I think every daddy-daughter should have those kinds of challenges. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Experiences. And... So for me, it was real special. Yeah. Mm. John and Greg were great. Were they? Yeah, it was super nice. Super nice to all of us. Very fair. Mm. And being a BBC production, you know, they're very, they don't care who you are. If you're out of line, they'll tell you. And it's the way it should be. Because mm. I've done other competition shows that mm. sometimes you wonder, like, what? Mm. You know. What on earth made you want to go into the jungle, though? <laughs> Seriously. Mm. Well, nowadays, you'd say, no. Mm -hmm. But when I went in, first of all, I was clueless, <laughs> and second of all, um, I didn't know the show. Um, I, I kept turning them down, and then they kept upping the, right. the perks. Yes, I see so what you're saying. So I ended up with this amazing suite at the Versace with my own pool. That hotel. That I never there. saw, because oh. <laughs> I was yeah. in the jungle. <laughs> and my family, they flew us all over, they flew us all over um, first class, each one of my kids had one of those pods, you oh. know, in the first class on Qantas. Oh. And we all thought we died and went to heaven because, <laughs> you know, bet. I can't afford those kinds of things. And so we sit there and my, I came home after being in there pretty much the whole time. And I saw toys from SeaWorld and I saw all these memories that my kids had without me. Oh. <clears throat> but it was worth it because, again, made friends mm. and... It, you know, it's weird because those shows, when you take a risk like that, people know you in a different way. They do. So when you go out on a stage, I feel like I'm amongst friends. Yeah. And even the blokes who used to never follow our hit records or whatever, they have some point of reference with you that's quite comfortable. Yeah. Because they know I, I don't take myself <laughs> serious, you know. Mm. I know I was just a pretty lucky kid to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, and what about, I, I can tell you what I remember seeing you on as well, quite a long time ago, Kids From Fame. Oh yeah. I love that show. Yeah, Fame was that cool. Was almost, that was quite a cult show at the time, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. And you know, I played a handicapped kid. Yeah. And I was offered the series, and I, so I came back for another episode, and they both won, the series won an award, I didn't win the award, but I was just because the content was so yeah, cool. Yeah, it was a really lovely program. And I just, you know, I just didn't feel like I could do that long term, but mm. it was so cool to have done it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we lo loved it over here. I remember the... Yeah, it was quite popular. Yeah, they came and toured, I think, as well. Mm, several times, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've also done lots of musical theatre as well, haven't you? A little bit. A little you bit. you played Billy Flynn? I have. In Chicago? I think here. No. Was it? Did it tour? No, it toured all over, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And... You've played in Greece. Greece and Joseph. Well. I did Joseph, Joseph actually before course. my brother did it. But then he did it, it's like you never did it. Because he did it so well. My oh, brother really? Donnie did it. You You're know. not saying he's better than you. He is better you? than me. But I'm all right with that. Are you? Yeah, I'm happy for There's his sloppy no... seconds, you know? He <laughs> <You> shouldn't say <laughs> that. <laughs> no, but you know, when you love somebody and you realize the talent that they are, I'm just different. I'm not him. Mm. And I'm happy to not be him. Mm. But I'm proud of him. Yeah. And I think that's a good place to do it, yeah. to have it, you know? I can't imagine you guys ever having a row. You're just so nice. Oh, we have rows, but, you know, usually it's due to people in the middle of us. Mm. You know, they call, we call them handlers, like they're animal handlers, but oh. celebrity handlers, like agents and managers and PAs and, you know when you do as much work as we all do, I'm not that posh, I don't really have that kind of stuff, but you get people in the middle and they're only after one thing, is mm. that's to look good for their client. Mm. And they forget that we're a family. Yeah. And when we're all together, it's all fine. 
right. So we just got to get him the monkey, monkey in the middle out of there, you know? Yeah, I hear, hear what you're saying. <clears throat> but that's the problem with most families in show business is everybody's mm. saying, well, hey, you, you don't need to do that, you know? You, you're your own guy. Mm. And for me, my favorite thing is to work with my brothers, but timing's everything. Yeah, and talking of your brothers, you're going on to do the Christmas show, aren't mm -hmm. you? With Meryl and Jay? Yeah, so. they, they agreed to do it again with me because this, you know, when I bought Andy's theater, that's what he wanted me to keep going. Yeah. And so every year I changed the show and I tested it over here last year and I did so well. Hard to find theaters because, you know, pantomime, I love pantomime, but um, it's hard to find theaters that don't have a pantomime on. Mm. It's nice to have um, something different because not everybody yeah. wants panto at Christmas, do they? I don't think so. So it's quite nice to have something um, like But that. I love panto at Christmas. Mm. You've, have you done, you've done panto, have you? I've yeah. done like five of them. My yeah. favourite one, I've done uh, I was wishy-washy buttons a few mm. times. My favourite one, though, was when I was Captain Hook. Oh, really? I, I had you. You're not tea. nasty, though. Oh, I was very nasty. I oh, made yeah. kids cry, and it was awesome. <laughs> I can't believe Jimmy Osmond saying that. <laughs> great fun. I, know, I th blew my throat, because I would sing Crazy Pirates and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Brilliant. You can imagine how fun I, it was. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I was yeah. a long-haired baddie from Liverpool, oh. and it was quite fun. I wasn't going to ma mm. mention long-haired lover from Why? Liverpool. Why? Because you must be sick It's like sick being Bob the Builder, you know? you don't, you got to <laughs> own it. And it was it was fun. It was good. I can remember singing along to it. Every time I do a show, people ask for it, and mm. when I do it, more rock version. Yeah. They all know the words, old and young alike. Yeah. It's just weird. In your little Elvis suit. Yeah. 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 That apparently Elvis had yeah. made for you. Is that well, right? Well, no, he didn't or make it, did... but his, not, not his designer made it. <laughs> yeah. And because I was forming in Las Vegas with Nancy Sinatra and Frank Sinatra would come in and pop in every once in a while and check on his little girl. And he gave me a hat one time because I would come out as a five-year-old boy and sing That's Life and pretend I was Frank Sinatra with the raincoat and all that. Brilliant. And we were sharing a schedule with Elvis and they thought it would be fun since that was kind of Elvis's theater, the Hilton. Mm. He had the big massive penthouse suite up at the top where the logo would go around in neon. Wow. And... Um, so I started impersonating him. And then that really stuck. And so we all ended up having jumpsuits with our assigned colors. Wow. And what was your uh, color? Red. Firecracker red. Oh, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, it was, it was very cool to have known him, mm. you know. It's not like I worked with him, but we were friends enough to say, Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? You know, and we shared the same dressing room. So it was really weird to see Elvis's jumpsuits then... My little Elvis oh. jumpsuit and the rest of our clothes, you know, to do our shows. Wow. And, you know, we would pass in the, you know, and the baton to each other. Mm. And then he'd let me stay up in his suite, which was quite cool. I, I was up there like, you know, the princess and the pea, or the prince and the pea, you know, yeah. sitting on this massive <laughs> bed with jungle wallpaper and just bizarre way to grow up. But you must have just, you didn't know any different though, did you? No. Wow. No. No. It's crazy. And even my friends that I had that were my baseball buddies would show up and we just, we didn't even think about it. It was just, hey, cool, this is fun. Let's throw a radio control glider off the top of the Hilton and get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And we did. Oh, so you were naughty then? <laughs> Very naughty. Oh. Very naughty. That's the naughtiest thing you've ever done. Well, that was pretty bad. <laughs> huh. Especially for the person that it landed on. Oh, loads of crazy <laughs> things. I mean, you know. And not to be inappropriate, but I grew up in such a weird way. I mean, we would be this squeaky clean, you know, family mm -hmm. performing in Las Vegas two shows a day next to Lido, a topless show. And we all shared the same, <laughs> you know, can you imagine growing up the way I did? It was yeah. like, wow. <laughs> and uh, it's amazing that I didn't fall off the rails because they never did. There's still time. But, you know, you know what I mean? It was quite fun yeah. to grow up that way. You obviously love what you do. Yeah. And to be able, like last night, we just opened up this Moon River show, which is a, produced with a lot of love. It's not about making money. It's just about getting it out there. You know, everybody has to make a living, you know, mm. to provide for their families. But to be able to go out there and have people remember their lives, that's what Andy would say. Yeah. He said, Jimmy, don't ever think people come to your shows to see you or me. They're coming to remember their lives when we were lucky enough to be on the radio. 
And that says it all, mm. how he kept it classy, cool, and into perspective, you know. We were never in this business to be famous. It was always just to have a craft mm. and be able to entertain people for a couple hours, forget their troubles. What else is there? Yeah. And that's what theater is all about, right? Yes, mm, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, we better let you get on because you've probably got oh, sound sick of me checks already. to do. No, we can <laughs> check for hours. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear lots more of that. Yeah, nice. Well, um, thanks for having me on your show. Oh, well, thank and, you. And uh, it's great to talk with you. I hope you're coming to the show. Are you going to come see it? I um, hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah.